Hello, I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is an important one. It's how do you repair a damaged skin barrier? And actually, this is becoming more and more of a problem because of overuse of exfoliants to harsh weather, it can all damage the outer layer of skin, the stratum corneum. And when that happens, the skin doesn't function properly, which leads to dry skin, sensitive skin, flaking, redness, irritation. Uh, it can allow infection into the skin. And actually, when you then apply any other skin camera to the skin, it can make the situation worse and you get into a vicious cycle. So this is a really important video and you need to know what to do in this situation, especially if you have skin of color. The reason is that any form of inflammation can trigger our melanocytes. Those are cells that produce the pigment melanin. So as I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. We cannot afford to irritate the skin. So in this video, we're gonna go through why it happens, how you step by step, how you treat the skin and how you're sabotaging the skin. So the biggest mistakes that get made. As you know, none of my videos have ever been sponsored and they will never be sponsored. That's very important so that we have a place to come to for evidence-based information. As you know, I am also on Instagram, so you can ask me questions on there too. So that's Dr. Mita Rattan. You can follow me on TikTok as well, or we have a private Facebook group called Dr. V Sock Family. Uh, also on here, I am in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single YouTube video. So when you subscribe, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know that I've released a video, I'm live, and you can come and ask me questions. Also, if you are a skincare geek as much as I am, please do get your hands on a copy of the Skin Revolution. It's a book that I published with HarperCollins available on Amazon. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Starting off with the causes. Number one is over exfoliation. This is why I don't like physical scrubs because when you use a physical scrub, you actually don't know how much the top layer you're taking off. Are you just taking off the dead skin cells or are you taking off living skin cells too? This is why I prefer chemical exfoliation. Opt for lactic acid or mandelic acid or the two together. So for example, I made exfoliate to glow. This is 5% lactic plus 5% mandelic plus glycerin, so it's hydrating. So what this does is it evenly takes a top layer of skin away, so the skin glows, but only the dead skin cells are removed. And so it doesn't damage the skin barrier. Plus, when you put a humectant in at a high percentage, so put 7% glycerin into this, you are holding water to the top layer of skin. So a product like the Exfoliate to Go, for example, will give you immediate glowing within 10 minutes. You put it on, wash it off after 10 minutes and your skin will be glowing like no other product. It's that fast. But you have to be careful which chemical exfoliant you go for. I've done another video on my favorite exfoliants on the market, uh, but this one I made for skin of color. The second thing to look out for are harsh cleansers. We can't afford to overstrip the skin because it changes the pH of the skin. And once you do that, you now damage the skin barrier. So it's that easy to damage our skin barrier. So look for gentle surfactants. Again, I've done another video on the, my favorite cleansers on the market. From my own range, it's basically, if you have oily acne prone skin, I recommend the Trio Blemish Face Wash. This is your salicylic acid face wash. Again, it's hydrating. And if you have normal to dry skin, I recommend our micellar gel wash from the Dr. D range. The next thing to look for is the weather. So whether it's excessive heat or excessive cold or excessive wind or coming in and out from cold weather to central heating inside or hot weather outside to air conditioning inside, all of this together also damages your skin barrier. The next thing to affect our skin barrier is age. The older we get, the less lipids we have in the skin. That's fats in the skin that prevents trans epidermal water loss. And so we the skin almost becomes weaker and more prone to effects of environment. So you have to be very careful. So as we get older, ceramides become more and more important and fats in our skincare also become more important. The next thing that can also damage the skin barrier, which you might not expect, are professional grade treatments, especially chemical peels, steaming, extraction, scraping of the skin, anything that's too harsh for the skin 
can damage the skin barrier. And this is why, you know, when it comes to facials, I get asked about facials all the time for skin of color, and I'm just not a fan. You know, I've done one video on how to modify the hydrofacial for skin of color, but even the way it is with, you know, without modification, I wouldn't recommend that for skin of color. It would have to be a modified version because I'm so aware of our skin barrier, how sensitive it is, how it becomes more sensitive with time and what the repercussions are for us, you know? If we get scratched by anything or anything's too harsh, the hyperpigmentation can last years, you know? And so for me, the cost benefit doesn't add up. I personally feel like if you have a good skincare routine, if you're exfoliating, you've got gentle washes, you're taking your makeup off properly, you've got antioxidants in your, in your routine, you have ceramides and peptides, um, if you have all the key ingredients, you don't actually need to go and get professional facials done. You should be able to get the glow at home and I'd feel much safer for you to do it that way. The next thing I would say to avoid are allergens. So irritants in your skincare. So things like, for example, denatured alcohol, fragrance, of course, and essential oils. So what do we do? Number one, prevention is always better than cure, which is why I've gone through the causes so that you can keep an eye out and protect your skin. But the second thing is, once it's happened, what we need to do is create a routine which is gentle, hydrating, nourishing, especially with fats. And that's what I'm gonna go through now. So the key staples for a skin barrier routine are number one, you want ceramides. Ceramides we already lack compared to Caucasian skin. That's what leads to dry, dull skin. So we need to make sure that we are loaded up on ceramides. The second thing I would say is humectants. My favorite is glycerin, more than sodium hyaluronate, I'd say. So look for that at a high percentage. The next is a balanced pH. So the entire routine should have a pH, skin pH, so about five to six. You want anti-inflammatories in the routine. You want occlusives in the routine to prevent any transepidermal water loss. And of course, you want it to be nafe safe. So starting with your AM routine, starting with your cleansers, I've got a list for you that are gentle. First one I would say is Cetaphil. So Cetaphil's got glycerin, panthenol, and niacinamide in it. It's cheap, you can buy it over the counter all over the world, um, and you know it's one that I would recommend. The second one I like is Aveeno Calm and Restore. So that's got glycerin and oats in it. Oats are anti-inflammatory, it's also great for eczema. The next one I like is Be Minimalist, 6% oats as well, plus glycerin. So Aveeno and Be Minimalist actually are quite similar in their um, key actives. Or you can use our Micellar Gel Wash from the Dr. Lee range. This is made for skin of color. So in here, put in 5% glycerin, 2% niacinamide, 3% Centella Asiatica, which is anti-inflammatory. Plus I put in Panthenol and Allantoin. So I loaded up on the anti-inflammatories. The reason is that for us, even pollution during the day leads to inflammation. Any form of inflammation for skin of color makes it look dull. And so the priority for skin of color is anti-inflammatory and that's what I did with the micellar gel wash. The next product then would be your hydrating toner. So you want a toner without alcohol. That's absolutely essential. And many of the toners on the market give you that squeaky clean feeling and you thought you were doing a good thing, you weren't. That's a very bad thing to be doing uh, because denatured alcohol has a low boiling point. It evaporates from the skin, it's volatile, takes water away with it, and it makes the skin dry and dull. So please avoid, avoid it. If, even if you have oily acne prone skin, Definitely avoid it if you have dry skin. Never use it on teens or young skin. So for me, denatured alcohol in a toner is was one of the worst mistakes made in the 1990s, and we like hopefully we've moved on since then. <laughs> so now uh, a couple of the ones that I like. Um, first of all, you want to look for ceramides and you want to look for humectants. So I like CeraVe's one; it's very good. It's got glycerin plus uh, ceramides in it. Or you can use our super hydrating toner. In here, I put in 3% niacinamide, so that repairs the skin barrier. I put in 6% glycerin, so that is a humectant, holds water in the top layer of skin. Put in 2% urea, which is a moisturizer, plus put in 2% panthenol, which is your anti-inflammatory. Next, you want a fatty moisturizer. The key actives you want, again, would be ceramides. You would want niacinamide, ideally a humectant like glycerin. 
uh, and anti-inflammatories. So I really like CeraVe's uh, moisturizer. In it, they've put glycerin and ceramides. With the Dr. V CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer, put in 2% niacinamide, we've put in 4% glycerin and 25% emollients. Plus, of course, your ceramides, your peptides, and your anti-inflammatories. And just to show you what it looks like on the skin. So you can see it's quite fatty and that's kind of a trick actually. If your moisturizer can sit upside down, it means that it has a high fat content. And it just rubs, it gives you a nice hydrated, luxury, thick feeling on the skin, which is almost, which is what you really want when your skin feels sore and dry, your skin will drink it up. We also want to prevent any further damage to the skin, so we want our SPF 50, ideally mineral because it's zinc oxide, which is anti-inflammatory. Of course, it has to be NAFE safe, no other irritants in the product. So I really like Color Science SPF 50, it's a tinted sunscreen. Alternatively, if you want a clear one, this is our one, it's made for skin of color and zincable. I'll just pop it in my hand so you can see what it looks like. So on the face, you would want about a quarter to half a teaspoon. That's obviously not quarter to half a teaspoon, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like on the hand. So with this, I've actually put in something called Mellis Shield. Mellis Shield uh, is a stem cell complex, which helps with anti-aging um, and also hyperpigmentation too. So I wanted something that gave me a dewy finish, especially on my cheekbones, um, but would help me with my fine lines. So I'm 40 this year and for me, I feel like my brain is becoming more and more anti-aging. I'm all about stimulating collagen, <laughs> preventing glycation. How do I live a healthy life? <laughs> How do I like keep my skin, you know, feeling healthy and strong for as long as possible? Um, and everything I make really uh, is geared towards what I feel like my skin needs. Uh, and actually when it came to sunscreens, there was no mineral sunscreen festival that was invisible, but there certainly wasn't one that was for anti-aging with niacinamide in it, with blue shield, so it protects you from blue light. It just didn't exist, it still doesn't. And in Zinco, as far as I know, and I, this is my job is to look at what's on the market and uh, make videos for you, there really isn't anything that comes close to Zincable yet. It might do, and you know, hopefully it will, but right now this is the only one that has all the actives in it. Now, when it comes to your PM routine, we don't want any actives, no exfoliation, put the, anything with AHA, BHA away. We're going to just cleanse the skin gently with the same one used in the morning. If your skin is very damaged, then I really wouldn't even wash your face in the morning, to be honest. I would just save it for nighttime to get rid of any pollution or irritants on the skin or sweat on the skin. Uh, you can use your hydrating toner, that's optional. Avoid the serums, like I said. Use a barrier moisturizer, so you can use our um, CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer or whichever one you want, even CeraVe's got a very good ointment if you need something a bit thicker. You can even top up with a facial oil. So something like squalane, jojoba oil, or Vaseline. So Vaseline being put on the skin is called slugging and you do it as your absolute last step. And all it does is just prevents transepidermal water loss, but your skin will thank you. So um, the other little trick that you can do that does help is sleeping with a humidifier. So you can, if you don't have a humidifier, a bowl of water is something you can put next to the bed. It evaporates and hydrates the skin. A humidifier is just a faster way of doing that. So as promised, the classic mistakes that get made, number one is not being patient. It takes six weeks to see results. So just stick with it for six weeks. If you start deviating, you're gonna make the situation worse. Number two is avoid hot showers. I know it's relaxing, but it strips the skin off fats and you cannot afford it. So cool showers, lukewarm showers, and very short, then pat the skin dry. Um, you don't want to be aggressive with the skin and honestly, I really wouldn't even wash your face when you're having a shower Make that a very short quick process that you do in the evening when you can control the temperature better And lastly avoid physical scrubs from removing those flakes those dry flakes on the skin It's only going to make the situation works. Also, don't pick the skin either. I know it's tempting I know you feel like you're doing a good thing and not is making the situation worse. Don't forget, I am in the comment section for one out the launch of every single YouTube video. So when you subscribe, hit that notification bell and please come and ask me your questions below. Also, any other videos you want me to make, please write them below. I do collate as I go along um, and, you know, they go onto my to-do list and I, you know, I'm constantly making videos and trying to help as much as I can. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Take care. Bye.